author Madeline Langle wrote, Maybe you have to know the darkness before you can appreciate the light. Theodore Roosevelt knew darkness. In 1884, his young wife Alice died two days after giving birth to their daughter, Alice Lee. Just 11 hours earlier, his mother died of typhoid fever in the same house. This grief-stricken 25-year-old widower made his way to the badlands of North Dakota. He went to heal his broken heart. What he discovered instead was a heart for preserving the beauty and wonder that exists in landscapes all across the United States of America. His experience in the Dakotas cultivated a passion to protect and preserve the greatness found in nature. When he became president, less than a decade later, he made conservation a primary focus. Under his presidency, 230 million acres were protected under the designations of national forests, parks, monuments, and reserves. This set a precedent for conservation that continued through the 1900s where millions of acres were deemed sacred. The National Park Service was established in 1916, three years before Roosevelt died. Theodore Roosevelt National Park was created in this man's honor in 1978. It was in this place that his fondness for nature was formed. When you visit here, you can see just what inspired him to act to preserve and protect the sacred beauty of this great country. Here are some of the top things to see when you visit the 70,000 acre park in the badlands of western North Dakota. For starters, the park is divided into three units, North, South, and Elkhorn Ranch. And to keep it interesting, they are also in different time zones. South and Elkhorn are in mountain time, with the north being an hour ahead in central time. Your first view of the park comes from the Painted Canyon Visitor Center. You can gather some information for your visit and stare out at the rugged, stunning beauty before you. The South Unit Scenic Drive is 36 miles of amazing scenery. There are lots of pullouts and overlooks, offering information and history about the park. There are also hiking trails, including the short trails of Ridgeline Nature Trails, Coal Vein Trail, Wind Canyon Trail, and Buck Hill. There are longer day or overnight hikes too, if that interests you. While you can see wildlife all throughout the park, a fun place to stop is Prairie Dog Town in the South Unit. Here, a predator is announced to the town with a series of barks and tail flicks, signaling the alarm for the rest to take cover in their burrows. Another neat place to see is the Petrified Forest Trail. The trees here have turned to stone. The Elkhorn Ranch Unit is the cabin site where Roosevelt purchased his ranch after first visiting this area. He loved the remoteness of it. His first home was called the Maltese Cross Cabin. A year later, he purchased the Elkhorn. This solemn area pays homage to Roosevelt's time here. Exhibits showcase passages he wrote about his experiences here on the ranch. It's inspiring to be in the place that stirred such a spirit of conservation within Roosevelt. The North Unit has a 14-mile scenic drive. This drive takes you through the bottom of the Badlands and then up and out of the canyon. There's a good chance you'll see some bison on this drive make sure to stop at the River Bend Overlook for a spectacular view. This area also has some great hiking trails. The Oxbow Overlook is the last overlook on this scenic byway and offers a magnificent view of the Badlands and the Little Missouri River 
running through a tree-lined valley. Visiting the nearby town of Medora is a little bit like walking into the Old West. This picturesque town makes for a great addition to your trip to Roosevelt National Park. You can set up a guided tour in Medora and head out into the Badlands via horseback. After your ride, you can browse the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame. This is a hands-on, informative experience complete with authentic artifacts. You can also visit the Chateau de Moors, the home of the Marquis de Moors, who arrived here in 1883. He built the 26-room mansion as the summer residence for his family. Today, you can tour the mansion, which has many of the original furnishings and personal effects on display. And no visit to Medora is complete without a meal at the famous Pitchfork Steak Fondue. Eating here is an experience. The steaks are speared on a pitchfork before being dipped into a cauldron of boiling oil. Top off your evening with the Medora Musical, a family-friendly variety show that's been running for over 50 years. If you enjoy visiting national parks, spending some time here at Roosevelt National Park is very special. This is the place that stuck in Theodore Roosevelt's soul and gave birth to a lifetime of conservation efforts. In addition to protecting 230 million acres of public lands, Roosevelt created the Forest Service and the Federal Bird Reserve, which would later be named the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. He also created the Antiquities Act of 1906, giving the president the power to declare by public proclamation historic landmarks, historic and prehistoric structure, and other objects of historic and scientific interests as national monuments. Teddy Roosevelt said, I would not have been president if not for my experience in North Dakota. And it's safe to say that our national park system might not be in existence if not for his experience there either. His dark period of mourning has brought light, life, and renewal to Americans for generations to come. Thanks for watching Shore Me Some More. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next story about the shores, outdoors, and more. Thank you.